allow and they gave us a really great lesson of rich to leave. They showed us what the rubrics were for a great reef, and the kids were in awe. Just within a minute, they took out their masks and they looked at me and they said, what happened to our reefs? Why isn't it like this? And I said, well, you know, that's why we're here, so that we can learn from these folks. And we did. And we took that approach. But what was more important, really, was, of course, we're going to take the bridge to lead the approach, but how are we going to do this? You know, I, I am not a scientist. My degree is not in, in coral or marine biology. In fact, I just met my professor here. She's an economics professor. My, my study is in business. And probably that's why it's going well. But we needed a method. How are we going to be able to get these kids in? And I said, you know, I would do it the way my parents would do it. So we did. We just got gathered them together, forget about the waiver, forget about consent forms and all of that stuff. Because you know, everything, every kid that was there was my niece or nephews. Everybody in humanity is related to everybody. And so it was easier for us to do that. And so we did. We took them out uh, with their, their gears and we showed them what great reefs we had or used to have. Um, and we got them comfortable in the water. We got them to know what was underneath there. Uh, nowadays, parents uh, are scared, and, and I believe it's, it's from the Department of Education that started all this, where they ban kids from going into the water. And so that generation grew, and they never went into the water. And so their kids don't go in the water. They're scared. Um, and it was difficult. We needed to get the parents to be with us just so that they are assured that everything was going to be okay. And they did. And then it started to be like a fiesta. So the parents were on the shore barbecuing and the kids were out of the reef. And so it got kind of carried away. So I said, okay, parents, you had enough. We're going to focus only on the the reef, and we did, and we did a great job. The method was just a simple literacy method. We impart the knowledge, we build the skills, and then they advocate. And when they advocate, that's when you got them. You've accomplished it. And so we did. We taught them. I'd like to uh, thank Bao and Maribel. Can you stand? They were our. You see them out there. They were our signers. As far as coral reef, uh, we looked to them to teach us about uh, um, pedinas and all of that stuff. Uh, the kids they call it out now by. Not by local name only, but also by scientific name. And, uh, and it's amazing how much, uh, as long as you, you provide that venue, they will come and they'll learn. So we taught them, and we taught them, and we took them to other places so that we can teach them more, and these other kids from other islands. So we've gone to Palau, They've given us the rubrics. We've gone to Pompeii, and they've enlightened us with their traditions. And then the last was in Ma uh, Hawaii, Maui, and they gave us uh, something to really look at. And Maribel's telling me to wrap up. <laughs> so we did the teaching. We did the skills building. 
So now our kids can go out and after a few more practices, they can be able to collect data like scientific and like scientific uh, scientists do when they go out there. They know their they have their transects and their uh, quadrants. <laughs> But lastly, they start to become mentors. They start to build a passion. And, and you'd be amazed how much they know and how much they can do. And once you, you get to that advocacy part, the advocacy stage, they either become a mentor, and if they're too busy, they get to go to college or they found a job, you already know that that information and that the traditional parting uh, is ingrained in them, and they'll they'll always remember that for their kids and their kids' kids. And so uh, we did it with so many people. We uh, just hosted over the summer. We hosted over a hundred. Uh, students from Micronesia that came to Guam for the Pacific Summit and they were the host, they spent the whole day in Montec taking them to the ridge and down to the reef and just giving them everything that they know. But it didn't stop there. We only had about 15, maybe an average of 15 kids during that time until we had put preservation heritage preservation into the equation. And it grew from 15 to 35. We have 35 consistent youth that, that come to the program. And we don't even like to call it a program. Because a program starts and finishes. So the kids call it a movement. And so we uh, got GDB involved. <laughs> Uh, they gave us some money so we can be able to teach our kids who they are, their history, why they do what they do today. Right now we're learning uh, from Fred Wampoge, who was one of the first observers uh, that came in in the 1600s. And they're learning about his writings about the people of Guam. And you know, a lot of the stuff that he's written down, we still do today, except instead of baskets, you have Tupperwares. <laughs> but, uh, so we took them, we trained them, and then they started to advocate. They started to share what they learned with not only visitors, with students, uh, with their parents. Their parents would come to me and said, you know, I never knew that the first Catholic Mass was said in the village of Monte. And I never knew that the capital was in Monte for two years. Because the governor's palacio in Havatnia was torn down by the earthquake. And the governor loved Monte very much because that's where the protocol was. That's where all the money's come in. He loved it and down there forever. So he made two years as a capital Dominic Mata. And so that's evident. Sorry, I don't have charts or formulas, but I do have people 